Hey friends! My name is Matthew Stensrud, and I'm the Lower School Music and Movement teacher at Sidwell Friends School in Washington, D.C. I'm super honored and excited to be part of the CMA Foundation's Unified Voices for Music Education initiative. I know that virtual learning has been tough. The spring was a challenging season for me too, but we can still offer some amazing lessons and musical experiences for our students. One of the things that I offered in the spring that I'm excited to share with you today is a movement lesson about the life and artwork of Vasily Kandinsky, an amazing abstract artist. Actually, I do have to give a shout out to my colleague Drew Bullington, another Orff Schulwerk educated teacher, who was an amazing inspiration as the two of us talked about Kandinsky and created lessons for our students. So, if you don't have colleagues where you can connect and grow with one another, I highly suggest you search on social media or use this CMA resource to continue to connect with one another, because we're here for each other in these challenging times. This Kandinsky lesson is probably best for upper elementary and is split into four main parts. First, we're going to explore words with our body. This includes locomotor and non-locomotor words, colors, feelings, and descriptive words. Second, we're going to explore the Chrome Music Lab, an amazing digital resource that we have to check out. And if you don't know anything about it, this is going to be so great. I'm really excited to jumping in that with you shortly. Third, we're going to learn about the life of Vasily Kandinsky. Did you know that he had synesthesia? And we're going to get to talk about that with the Google Slideshow. And then finally, we're not only going to look at the artwork of Vasily Kandinsky, we're going to create with it. First, that means writing a poem. And we're going to take some simple steps as music teachers. I know that poetry may not be our first go-to, but it is a wonderful way to create with our students and to use that poetry as a springboard into movement. So not only for that fourth spot are we going to write a poem, we're also going to use that poem to create an individual dance. So, we have a lot of things to do. Let's jump in. First, we're going to explore movement words. And I'm taking this directly from a video lesson that I made with my students. So you'll see how I just give the movement word, whether it's a locomotor word or a non-locomotor word or the color blue or the feeling calm or the descriptive word connected. And then you'll see me show that word which is a great resource for the students if they're not really quite sure what to do. So let's take a little look at that lesson right now. What if each time I say a word, you can do that word with your body? Ready? Creep. Dart. Float. You'll notice that those were all locomotor words. Locomotor words travel from one place to another place and use all of the space. Let's try some non-locomotor words. Stretch. Slash. Expand. Not locomotor words. Stay in your place. So you noticed you did each of those words 
from one place. Now, what about colors? Could you try these colors? Red, blue, yellow. Did you decide to use all of the space or just make something in one place? What if this time for those colors, you could make a pose, like a statue that describes that color for you? Red. Blue. yellow. Now friends, what about some feelings? How can you make these feelings with your body? Maybe just a shape or a pose that you hold. Maybe it has a little bit of movement, but it kind of stays in one place. Calm. Excited. Nervous. How about some descriptive words? These are words we could use to describe something, like a piece of art. Connected. Busy. Colorful. That was fun. I'm so glad you went on that adventure with me. Second, we're going to explore the Chrome Music Lab. So if you don't know anything about the Chrome Music Lab, you are in for a treat. And one of the features is Kandinsky where we're going to use the idea of synesthesia to create with colors and the students get a chance to do that too and then listen to what it sounds like. So let's explore that right now. Here it is. What I can do is create with my mouse by clicking and holding. Let's see what I can make. Ooh, maybe a few straight lines, maybe a circle. Maybe another circle. <gasps> that one makes a face. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Some little lines. A crazy one, maybe. Another circle. Maybe I can make another face. <gasps> oh, let's hear what it sounds like. That is pretty cool. You can see how st synesthesia has come to life because the colors that I created, the abstract art that I just made on the screen, connected with sound. With this button here, I can change the color. I noticed the color also changed the instruments. Let's try another color. 
Wow! Now let's say there was something I didn't like that I just made. I could press the back button and some of the things that I made would disappear. And then I could make something new. And hear what something new might sound like. Ooh, that's a deep one. Now what I made is very, very different just by erasing a few things and adding some others. I hope you saw what an amazing resource the Chrome Music Lab is. And whether you're teaching synchronously in a live class or asynchronously in a video lesson, this works really well. You can share your screen in a live class, explore it with your students, they can share their screens and create live, or you can take it another route where the students create, screen record, capture that, and then share it with you. Third, we're supposed to dive into the life of Vasily Kandinsky and learn a little bit about synesthesia now that we've explored it. The students are probably like, tell me more about what this even means to me. So here are some Google Slides that we can explore together. Let's hop into these slides. You'll notice when you click the link that you can make a copy. That way you can modify the slides however you like. Vasily Kandinsky was a Russian artist known for his abstract art. And when he heard sounds, he saw colors. When he saw colors, he heard sounds. That is known as synesthesia. This means that one sense automatically leads to another sense happening at the same time. For Kandinsky, it was seeing colors and hearing sounds. So, we already explored this in the Chrome Music Lab, but oftentimes I'll show these slides first and then hop in and create in the Chrome Music Lab. What a fun adventure the Chrome Music Lab is, by the way, so I really hope you have time to check it out. I always like to also give a couple of steps that are really clear for my students to understand what they need to do. For, so whatever app you're using for the students to share your feedback, whether it be Google Classroom or Seesaw or somewhere else, they know the steps you need to take. Let's take a little bit of a journey into the artwork that Kandinsky created. I always suggest using sentence starters. So here you'll notice the sentence starters on the side, so that if you're doing this in a live class, the students can share out louder in a chat. If they're at home watching this as a video, they can actually think those sentences or even say them out loud. I notice circles. I feel relaxed. I feel anxious. I wonder why he chose the colors he did. Here's another artwork. And another piece. And another piece. Next, we get to write a poem about Kandinsky. Here's how it goes. You'll notice on the left are some descriptive words, much like the movement words that we were exploring earlier. With this piece by Kandinsky, I selected one feeling word, two color words, three movement words, two descriptive words, and then one contrasting feeling word. So my poem goes like this. Calm. Green. Yellow. Slash. Leap. Stretch. Connected. Circular. Busy. Interesting how this work work of art really makes me think both calm and busy. And the colors that I chose and the movement words and the descriptive words were really letting the students dive a little bit deeper into the artwork. What if then I could dance my poem? I'm going to say each word and then move to that word, which means if I memorize the poem, it's probably going to help me be successful. And then I'll show each word for a few seconds in my body. And remember, Mistakes aren't possible. This is simply you expressing yourself and expressing the piece of art you choose in movement. 
So let's take a look at my dance. We're going to we're going to see an actual teacher example, so the students will have a concrete concept of what to create. And then they'll use the pieces of art that we explored. So let's go back and look at them again. This one they could pick, this one they could choose, or they could select this one, or finally that one, to write their own poem following the same structure that I set up here, but their own words, and then turning that into a dance. Let's take a look at the dance now. Wow! What a great step in jumping off point into the movement. So not only did we look at the artwork, we thought of, we used the sentence starters, and then you had a chance to see a teacher created poem, and now we get to see a teacher created dance. Let's take a look. Calm. Green. Yellow. Slash. Leap. Stretch. Connected. Circular. Busy. And there you have it. These four steps could be spread over a number of weeks to be a great upper elementary music and movement lesson. You'll notice that a lot of different areas did we get to touch on to explore. So take and use this as you like. Take parts of it that work for you, use it exactly as you saw, modify it for what might be better for your students in your classroom, because that's what matters. And I'm so thankful again to the CMA Foundation for inviting me to get to share this lesson with you today. My name is Matthew Stensrud. You'll often find me on social media as Mr. S. Orf, and I'm really glad that you checked out this music and movement lesson about the life and artwork of Vasily Kandinsky. See you next time.